and welcome to a new episode of Exclusive Insights, the format of Salem, where we look at the big trends in strategies and marketing. This time we are asking the question, how can a good content recycling strategy improve your return on investment? Before we begin, a quick note that this webinar will be recorded and sent to all participants afterwards as well. If you have any questions, please post them in the chat and we will answer them at the end of this discussion. My name is Fabian Greiler and I'm a Senior Mayor Marketing Manager at Silum. And today I'm very pleased to have Pia Eck as our guest. Pia is founder and CEO of Content Fish, a content marketing agency from Vienna, helping clients such as Almdoodler, Sodexo, ACP, or Welser Profile with their content strategy. I think we should jump into the topic right away. Pia, can, can you tell us a little bit more about your work and why you think setting up a content recycling strategy is so important? Sure. First of all, hi Fabian. Hi to all the guests. I'm really happy to be here today. Thank you for the invitation. So for me, content recycling is a really important part of a good content marketing strategy because uh, finally you can tell a good story thousands of times and you will still inspire people. So why shouldn't we use the content that we already have and reuse it again? Mm -hmm. You know, when we talk about content recycling, I'm always wondering how the recycling actually really uh, is done and how it works. Because if I think about, you know, recycling of garbage, there's always you, uh, all, all this also a process to follow, right? So you take the garbage somewhere and it is then transformed into something new. So could you a little bit explain how the steps are in content recycling? So what mm -hmm. happens when you take the old content uh, and how you transform it to a new one? Mm -hmm. Sure. Um, finally, content recycling means reusing existing content, as you said it before. So, for example, if you have um, a content like a video, a podcast, a blog post or infographic that is more or less outdated, you can update it and you can publish it again and say, OK, hey, this is an updated content piece. Or maybe you decide, hey, I want this content uh, to be a good fit for a new channel. Um, then you can adapt it to a new target group, to the new goals that you want to achieve. So it's not only um, about renewing, it's also about reusing, reducing, extending, doing something from scratch more or less. Mm -hmm. So it's not only the content itself, but also on which channels you publish them, for example. Yeah. Thank you. And, um, you know, when uh, when you start with content recycling and you're just thinking about the strategy, you want to do that more in a structured way. Then, because I think at one point, every one of us using old content, right? But uh, a strategy is always involves always having like a real processes behind. Uh, so. When you uh, when you advise your clients, your customers, what are the fundamental elements they should consider if uh, they want to set up a content recycling strategy? So I would say that there are two ways, finally. As you said, sometimes we just need a little um, piece of content that we want to recycle because, for example, we need it for a new campaign and we know, hey, there has been this little graphic somewhere, so we take it, we recycle it and we use it for the for the campaign. Or if you really have like a content recycling strategy as part of your um, content marketing, then I would say you should do it step by step. So one of the elements should be um, a content audit uh, at the beginning to see what kind of content do we have, what, you, what do we need, um, what parts are, for example, evergreen content. Then you also need um, clear goals, for example, in the form of KPIs, because finally you want to see, hey, was my content strategy um, really successful? Mm -hmm. It's always uh, quite um, useful to have an editorial plan mm -hmm. because um, in, in most companies, um, you have a whole marketing um, department, you also have a sales department and everybody is more or less um, interested in content recycling and using the content that is already there. So with an editorial plan, everybody knows when, which content should be published. 
So it's more on a on on the on the level of organization and structure. And finally, another uh, the last element that I would advise is um, a kind of reporting system. So um, content recycling is successful when you always um, report and optimize it again and again and again. Because as I said in the beginning, a good story can be told thousands of times. So maybe I recycle this content that is super successful and that performs really well. Maybe I recycle it like every year. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think it's reporting is a very good keyword actually, um, because we also know um, in the title about uh, talking about re return on investment. And uh, sometimes they could be very difficult, right? What, uh, what the return on investment is. So you mentioned if uh, you uh, set up a content recycling strategy that you look what kind of content was successful and that you also advise to do the reporting. So um, <clears throat> what makes a what makes a content then actually successful for you? Yeah, is it the conversion out of this content? Is it the impressions? So what what they're looking for? Um, what makes something successful? Um, let me give you a more general answer on it because as every kind of marketing, also content recycling is quite individual. So it depends on, diff on, on uh, different goals. For example, um, the general company goals or a campaign goal. So finally, um, a content recycling strategy is successful if you have achieved your personal goals in, in, in this situation or your individual goals. Mm -hmm. Because finally, if you don't measure something, you don't know if it was successful. So I wouldn't say it's this KPI or that number that uh, makes a strategy successful. It depends on your goals that you have set in that moment. Mm -hmm. And, you know, as you um, work with a lot of different uh, clients so in different industries, um, are, there, are there any numbers where you were very, very much impressed by from a content recycling perspective? So any, any, any idea of that, what, what you said, this was really, really cool numbers? Mm -hmm. Well, they are the, it depends on the numbers that we, that we want to see. For example, um, we have in mind like, uh, hey, how many shares did it get? How many views? Um, impressions. We also have a look on the bounce rate. Um, let me give you an example. Um, maybe let's say that you want to um, promote your new podcast episode. Yeah, then you then you uh, start recycling um, because you do like uh, small snippets or um, still images or like, you know, like a, like an image that uh, doesn't move. Mm -hmm. um, you also promote your podcast with a super short uh, snippet in another podcast, just to say, hey, we have the same audience. Maybe you also want to, to listen to this uh, podcast. And of course, then you, you, you try to find out, hey, was it successful? Did we get a lot of views on this? Did we get a lot of um, impressions? Do we have more followers on this um, podcast channel uh, now after having this promotion? And um, what I'm always impressed about is um, the impact of um, content recycling on a corporate blog because there you really can count like the numbers are increasing, increasing when you, when you do a good uh, content recycling. Mm -hmm. But I, I can imagine that it is very difficult to put a price tag on, you know, the growth of a, of a corporate block, for example. Um, so um, is there any way or, or is there some, some customers who demand like a, like a number for the return of investment when, when they work with you, when they set up content marketing strategies and recycling strategies? Mm, I would say that they don't really demand for um, super strong KPIs in form of uh, numbers. It's more that they want to understand the general uh, return of invest and um, what content recycling has on their content marketing strategies. 
So for example, what we always say is um, if you recycle, let's say a blog post, then it's less costly than uh, creating a blog post from scratch. Or um, you always have your content, um, uh, um, uh, you have an overview of your content and you know what you have and what you can optimize, what you can work on. So you have it a little bit um, under your control. Yes. So these are more the, the impacts companies are looking for and what they want to understand. Why is it worth it to do content recycling? Mm -hmm. And when, uh, so when, when companies start with uh, content recycling, you mentioned these steps already, you know, that you kind of look through all their content you already have, then you analyze what is successful, and then you kind, uh, kind of bring this content to new formats or new channels. Um, what do you think from your experience, uh, where are the, the biggest challenges in doing that? You know, uh, is it finding the content even, or is that the easy part, or is it like the reporting and the analyzing? So what, what do you think is the biggest challenge to overcome if, uh, if you really want to um, be successful with content recycling? Okay, now I can tell you something that is also our challenge, and we also see it uh, with our clients. So we all have more or less the same uh, challenge behind it. And for me, or what I see is the strategy. Yeah, because um, without a good content audit, you don't know what kind of content is worth it uh, to be recycled. Without KPIs, you don't know what kind of goals you are um, running behind. Mm -hmm. um, without knowing your buyer persona, you don't know, hey, is this really interesting for my target group? Or what do I want to do with all of this content? So it's a little bit the same what we see in general with content marketing. A lot of companies are producing and doing in their um, a lot of amazing stuff finally. So it's really impressive what, what all these companies do. But finally, the question is, what do I do it for? So what is my goal behind it? And here we see the same with uh, content recycling. So it's really worth it to just to go a step back when you made the decision, okay, I want to recycle my content because I have great content. So go this step back, think about it, create something like at least a mini strategy mm -hmm. and try to do it in a sustainable way. Yeah, you invest a little bit more in the beginning but afterwards, um, you control the whole process and you can really measure if it was successful or not. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's also a very mental thing, right? That they're not, if you publish that, and often it's like, I mean, it's also, you know, in our daily routine, if you uh, spend that much time in producing the content and it's finally done, and you publish it, and then you think, ah, now it's, now it's, now it's done, now, now my work is, is finished um, and it's kind of like a attitude I would say even that you um, maybe then come back and say yeah this is this content is published but I shouldn't forget about it I should uh, maybe also think ahead of, of what we can do next with that yeah in the future. Absolutely and I really do understand that because we are an agency that also pr uh, um, produces content so it's not only about the strategy and then we go give um, the content to a freelancer and say, hey, here you have a briefing, do something. So we are really part of this content creation and we know the really high effort behind it. And this is exactly why we always think, hey, try to have a strategy, try to have um, an editorial plan, try to get to know your um, target group, your buyer persona, think about all these touch points points for example if you do employer branding in your can candidate journey because if you really understand what is going on your um, content becomes better and better and better and you achieve goals like um, good qualified leads or great um, new em employees so um, mm -hmm. it's really worth it in from our experience 
Mm, okay, so it's really like what you also do in content marketing, right? It's not also when you create new content that you should really have your buyer personas in place aligned, that you should have your KPIs you want to achieve and basically the goals you want to reach with the content. If that's not set up, basically, then content recycling doesn't make sense. Is that correct summarized? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And finally, what we see is um, content recycling um, hap can happen in every moment. So let's imagine that, for example, um, a marketing manager starts in a new company and he um, has done his uh, content audit and he's realizing, wow, we have great content. We should do something with it. Huh? because it's somewhere behind all the other stuff and nobody can find it. So then it's also super important to know your, for, as you said, your buyer persona, your goals, because then he can directly start working on it. Mm -hmm. If not, he has to go back like three or four steps. Mm -hmm. And is actually organizing the content also part of the strategy? I mean, my, ask, my question comes from, you know, Silom is really a, a software yeah. tool that drives marketers to do that. And uh, in our daily work, we see that uh, many companies struggle with that, right, to um, um, create kind of a single source of truth where they find all their content. Yeah, so um, we always see that, that um, and there's also many studies out there that, that uh, marketers spend almost half the week looking for stuff. Yeah, lookup factor is really high. Um, so is organizing also part of that that you advise customers or do you see any problems here? Or is that um, a minor thing for you? No, it's not a minor thing. So organization is one of the most important parts of content recycling and also of content marketing. Um, maybe you can think about like you're cleaning your house. Yeah, if you only tidy up and clean around the front a little bit, you will never know what is uh, hidden, like like little treasures that you want to find and that you want to have in mind. And um, also in terms of uh, the um, return of investment, you don't want to create the same content again and again and again. It really makes sense to to um, to know what you have and also to know what you don't have and then making good decisions. Mm -hmm. So yes, organization, organizing content is really, really important. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and uh, you, mean you mentioned it already a little bit, <clears throat> but maybe also what kind of content is the easiest one to recycle, right? So it's, it's, I mean, I guess it's text, but um, there's also videos out there, images and stuff like that. So what do you recycle the most, most of the time? Mm -hmm. mm, I would say the content that is most suitable for content recycling is evergreen content. So mm -hmm. content that will be interesting um, for your target group today, tomorrow, in a year, in two years. And uh, content um, that includes topics related to your company goals. So this is for us more or less how we understand evergreen content uh, content for companies. Yeah. So this is one thing. Um, then I would say content that isn't um, consumed um, like in a quick way, for example, you would never, or maybe sometimes, but not a lot of times, um, recycle a social media post from last year. Mm -hmm. So it's like, okay, this is a really fast channel, um, but you would recycle a really good high quality video because you see, hey, I can do a lot of things with this video. Or you would um, recycle um, good blog um, posts where you can simply say, hey, yes, we, we published this blog post last year, but now it's still um, uh, actual, it's still interesting. And even more, we updated it with uh, some new information from studies, statistics. We got a new point of view of this, so maybe we discuss it a little bit more. Um, I would say, so 
the more static um, content that you have on websites, channels like YouTube or um, blog posts, podcasts. Podcasts are amazing for, for content recycling because you can do so many things out of it. Mm -hmm. Cool. So if you if you recycle basically blog posts, that would be that means you um, advance this or add some new content to existing blog posts and then um, advertise them again because I don't think that you publish them again, right? So you you just try to keep it like it is the URL of the blog post and then promote it again. Yeah, finally, so, there's one important part. Uh, if you recycle a blog post, you really have to keep your uh, URL, as you said it, absolutely. Um, it's also um, worth it to check out uh, the keywords because normally um, a search engine like uh, Google will always uh, try to figure out, hey, which kind of main con uh, keyword do we have here? So this is really useful. And for example, if you see, hey, this is, this blog post is really good, but it doesn't perform yet. Then you can think about um, a new keyword. But in general, most of the time you go with the uh, high performing blog posts and then you, you keep the, the keyword. And yes, um, content recycling of, of a blog post can mean you have little replacements. For example, hey, here we can put um, new links because we have a lot of new websites, landing pages, blog posts, etc. Or you have a really big adjustment like, um, okay, you simply keep the structure, but text, images, uh, links, infographics, everything is new. So there's a really big, uh, big uh, how do you say that, uh, March to do it. <laughs> yeah, no, cool. Um, and uh, maybe um, already as a last question, because you know we are a MarTech company, so of course I have to ask that um, for for content recycling strategies. Are there some kind of tools you're using? You mentioned that you audit the content. Uh, are you using SEO tools or how do you, what, what tools are you using for, for that or what methods yeah, for mm -hmm. analyzing and recycling? Mm, the tools depend a little bit on the format of content. So for example, if we recycle a website or a blog post, we would use Ahrefs or Ask the Public. Um, if we want to see like, um, we also use the, the LinkedIn tools or HubSpot tools that are already included. And yes, also tools like uh, Silum are super, super interesting because then you really have everything organized and uh, you have, you directly see your structure. You can, you're, you're much faster, I would say. And um, finally, content creation is like a, it, it takes some time, so tools can help to do it um, in a much more effective way, which is also a big impact um, on your return on, uh, of investment. But the tool that is most important for us are finally the people we are producing the content for. Because mm. if we don't understand the people behind it, we will we won't find a tool that can say, hey, this will be su successful or not. And of course, mm -hmm. the tools also give us some information to understand people's behavior um, and everything. But finally, what we try to do is we talk to people, we try to get answers, we try to communicate with them. We um, invest a little bit more in doing buyer personas. We are creating talent pipelines. We try to find all these touch points and uh, we are learning. So mm -hmm. we see ourselves a little bit like learners and um, we always try to optimize it. Mm -hmm. So also the people, because a machine can spit out a lot of numbers and these numbers can be amazing. I mean, we also have to, to show something to our team lead and um, we learn from these numbers and that's great, but we have to combine it with uh, a little bit the human factor too. Mm -hmm. Cool. You, you mentioned that you, you work with talent pipeline. What, what is that exactly? 
Um, we content so we do content marketing um, in terms of inbound marketing, um, reference marketing, but also um, employer branding. So um, we really help um, companies finding um, new employees. Mm -hmm. And for the talent pipeline, we try to see, okay, um, this person doesn't know uh, the company. This person doesn't know, okay, there's maybe a cool, a good job. So we try to understand how, uh, how many touch points does this uh, person have to go through um, to finally end up as, a, um, as an employee in this company. This also includes, for example, marketing automation, yeah, that you, you have a really quick process. And here it's also super important to do something like content recycling, because you don't have to create this whole content from scratch. You really can use what you have and do a really nice uh, pipeline. Mm, so like a customer journey, but more in Exactly. Okay. Yeah, cool. finally, it's more or less the same. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. So, and for the methods you are using, you mentioned already by persona. So that's that's what you use the most when you ask people that that kind of the the outcome of this research is then uh, merged into by persona. So, is there any anything else that helps you to define the target audience? Um. Yeah, well, these are finally this is a like a combination of a lot of things. You do like um like a content audit. Yeah, you really try to understand um uh, where do we want to go to, what is already existing, what is still missing. We try to understand the target group. Um, we also, of course, we also do a little bit like oh, what do all the others do? So we try to learn from them because we also can see okay, this was successful and this was not successful. Let's um, share experiences here. <laughs> of course, this is also part uh, um, that we do. Um, and then it's a lot about also having like having a community. Finally, all this content that we publish is cool and nice and with tools we understand this is successful or it's not successful but finally we will also want to get some answers on it we also mm -hmm. want to see hey did, uh, did they like it um, maybe they have some questions and then we start doing like um, email campaigns like automations behind it so that we can use all of this and i think this is really the big, big benefit um, from content recycling, that you get um, as much as possible out of your content. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that was already a good last word, so, <laughs> so to speak. Um, yeah, if there are any questions, and just take a look at our chat and uh, ask also our technician behind Ether if there's anything on YouTube. If not, would wait maybe uh, a couple of seconds. Um, um, yes, the the voice in the off um, mm -hmm. has a question. <laughs> um, um, we've heard a lot of of um, return on investment and um, cutting costs and cutting uh, resources in in when it comes to content. Um, recycling um, but from your point of view from your personal point of view what is the the biggest advantage for a company for any company um, besides the, the named resource reduction cutting um, out of, of content upcycling mm, you mean the biggest benefit from content recycling yeah exactly besides cost reduction and um, resource yeah, savings, manpower and, and stuff like this. Mm -hmm. um, besides from uh, costs, resources, etc., as you said, I would say a really big benefit is that you always keep an eye on all your content. So you can uh, make really good decisions um, where um, an extra effort makes sense, yeah? 
of course also again a part of costs but finally this will always be a big point yeah that you really try to be productive um, effective um, and then another really big um, benefit for me is that you constantly learn more about your target group. So, and the consequence out of this is that you um, create better and better and better content. And what does it mean? You get better leads, your whole success gets more and more. So um, it all depends a little bit on each other and understanding your, uh, your target group is super super important in in content marketing and um, finally another um, big benefit is also that you that you get uh, better leads because um, you have clear uh, a clear user intent and um, you can optimize this content again and again and you can make maybe also some tests so this is what we do we just say okay this was already successful let's see what happens if we even improve it or sometimes yes sometimes it's all a mess up to be honest so you can you can play a little bit with your content too you can learn from your own processes and you get better and better and you learn from your successes but also from your mistakes so I would say that these are the most important benefits from content recycling besides um, from the costs. Thank you. And Pia, you mentioned already okay. that um, you know for recycling of content it makes of course sense to only take the high quality um, content, evergreen content and so on. So when you um, when you work with uh, your clients and you know there's always the I think there's still this this idea in marketing departments. Yeah, we have to publish every day something on social media and stuff like that. Um, so is it something that you actively advise that they spend their limited? Everyone has limited resources, right? That the resources they are there more for less content, but for good content. So reduce kind the kind of the quantity and really focus on the quality. Is that something you would advise or? I would always advise um, focus on um, quality also because search engines behind it want to have quality and maybe not today but in two years probably so and every content that is in the internet won't be forgotten so yes you should always focus on uh, on quality but my or our advice in general is um create really um qualified content but then think about how can you use this content again and again and again um let's say you have um a video like an employer branding video then you have a, probably a high quality content but don't only put it on youtube and on your website use it for much much more use it for example as you said okay we have to publish like every day or every two days on social media so create some snippets um, out of it um, maybe some funny situations where you simply can use exactly this video for another goal like saying hey we have really great team building by, uh, in our in our company or hey we are looking for you Mm -hmm. or fun at work so this is also part of social media yeah or you have a little description of your video and you simply put it in i don't know in facebook groups and say hey this could be super interesting for you um so i would say try to do the best out of your qualified content mm -hmm. so um it is advisable that you take take a step back and then really think about all of the box basically where I can use your, your content as well and exactly. not just follow the rules as you always did with the content. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, being creative, I would say it's worth it. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Isa, again, the question, is there any other questions around in, on the internet for our topic? Um, no, because most of the questions were answered during the talk. 
Cool. That's so good. if there's any other question, um, don't hesitate to contact me or Fabian and we will try to give a good answer on your question. So even if uh, tonight having dinner, you think, oh, this would have been interesting, just let us know. Mm -hmm. Cool. Thank you very much, Bia. And of course, all the audience uh, will get the recording of this video as well. And then there will be also the opportunity to just contact us directly and we're happy to answer all the questions. Um, if you like this exclusive insight or also we have another format which is called Use Academy, which explains a little bit more about how Silum work as a tool, then head over to our website, silum.com. Under events, you can uh, register for our events newsletter and you will always get the invites to our newest webinars and events. Yeah, I want to say thank you very much, Bia, for your time. I think it was really interesting. Um, I think content marketing is a very exciting topic, a very growing topic as well in marketing. Uh, and if you create more content, it's very important to also recycle them. Yeah, use them more, yeah. often, more often than once. And I hope to the audience that you liked uh, our quick uh, insight to this topic and wish you a good afternoon. Thank you, Fabian. Goodbye. Goodbye. Bye-bye.